welcome to the Wednesday edition of DC Today. We uh, actually had an update in the market today. The market had been down five of the last six days in the Dow, and the Dow uh, was up 184 points today, a little over half a percentage point. So not a ton there, but some degree of recovery. Um, 10 out of 11 sectors were positive. Energy was still down, but only by 30 basis points. That was the only sector that kept us from running the table in positive sector performance today. The S&P was up a little over 1%, NASDAQ up a little over 1.5%, so you still continue to see uh, a lot of the market rallying around the big tech names. And in fact, uh, NVIDIA, the major uh, chip name around uh, artificial intelligence, re reported their results after market today. And as of the time I'm talking here, the aftermarket action looks like it's up quite a bit. And that's just an incredibly expensive stock that has rallied huge this year and going up further still. So a lot of momentum in that, in that name for whatever that's worth. But tech was the leading performer today. And, uh, you know, it's kind of gone in cycles here this year. You have had periods where the whole market did not look good and tech did. And you've had year, or particularly big tech and some of the key uh, large capitalization names. Then you had a little period uh, where the the breadth of the market really kind of uh, expanded, and tech was not doing great, but a lot of other market sectors were. That started to give the the feel of the rally a little bit more legs, and then um, everything kind of sold off together, including a lot of tech. And then now you seem to have a uh, a lot of things in the market not doing well, but some of the big tech still doing well. That's the environment, candidly, that I think is least sustainable. But uh, what that means in terms of timing, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to guess. Uh, the other thing that happened today, though, is just probably kind of the real story of the market movement today is bonds did finally catch a bid. You had uh, the 10-year yield down 13 basis points, so it came from 433 uh, back down to 420, a tiny bit below 420 as the, the rate market was closing up. Um, so that correlation up and down between bonds and stocks continues. Oil closed at 79.50, so not a big movement around oil prices. Um, and in terms of economic data, first let me start with the composite PMI, which is the number from uh, Standard Porters today that blends manufacturing and services and you got a downtick in both. So the overall composite PMI stayed in expansion territory, but barely at 50.4. It had been at 52 last month. And that's the lowest level since February. Uh, but then within that, the manufacturing number went from 49, which was already contractionary, to 47, a little bit more contractionary. And then the services uh, came in at 51 and down a more as well, but still technically in expansion mode. So that's really uh, kind of the, the issue right now is services are keeping the economy up a bit. Manufacturing uh, is, is on the downtick. New homes, uh, new home data came out today. We had existing home sales yesterday. New home sales were up year over, uh, or excuse me, month over month. But prices were down 8.7% versus a year ago. And that's with 55% of home builders offering incentives to get homes done. 25% offering out-and-out -out price discounts. So, I, you know, it's, it, the market has hung in there. And we've talked about this ad nauseum. But no one can really look to anything firming up, per se. It just kind of remains, you know, somewhat vulnerable and new home construction is, is a great example here. A, a piece I wanted to quickly cover on, it is somewhat anecdotal, but I've had a number of people ask about the credit card delinquency data, and then I've seen more in the media. Is there an economic concern, a macroeconomic concern around potentially rising delinquencies on credit cards? And of course, if you hear that there's a whole lot more people not making a minimum payment on their credit card, that doesn't sound good. So that's a fair expectation. But I just want to point out by way of relative data, the delinquency rate had gotten below 2% when the uh, interest rates were very low and when the government had, during COVID, extended such a long period of benefits and in some cases out and out direct cash transfer payments. Um, but when we say it's now come up, we're talking about it's gone from 2% to 2.6%, 2 
Well, 2.6 was the average delinquency rate for 10 years pre-COVID, after financial crisis up to COVID. And, and that was in a period of economic expansion and the delinquency rate was 2.6. So all we've done is get back to what the delinquency rate was pre-COVID in a good period. And even that understates a certain reality, which is that the delinquency rate for 25 years before that had been 4.4%. So I don't think you like it going from 2 to 2.6, but I don't think it's super meaningful yet. I mean, it would really have to move above at least what it's already been in a good period for it to really start to be predictive of any economic vulnerability in, in my assessment. So I wanted to share some of that data with you. So that's a scoop across some of the uh, economic news uh, bits today as well as market happenings. And we'll see where things go tomorrow, Thursday. Uh, I have meetings all afternoon tomorrow. And so my partner, Brian Seitel, will bring you DC Today tomorrow, Thursday. And I, of course, will have the Dividend Cafe for you on Friday. In the meantime, reach out to us with any questions and happy debate watching tonight. Thanks for watching, listening, reading the DC Today. Mm -hmm.